Sergio Royo is UNOH men's soccer program's all-time leading scorer. He also holds several other school records and has helped the team into the NAI tournament the last several years. Now he's embarking on a professional soccer journey with Rochester, the Rhinos of the USL. It's a professional soccer league just below Major League Soccer. Well, before he took off for Rochester, he had a chance to share with our Fellowship of Christian Athletes group at UNOH. It's a group he's attended all year long as he shares his story of faith. It's going to be a little bit different to what everyone has done, right? Because he's on camera and everything. <laughs> Hello, people from the future. <laughs> um, okay, well, I made a little PowerPoint for, for everyone. Um, I'm just going to speak about, I'm not going to go in, into depth of my, like my really personal life, but I'm going to talk about my, my spiritual life and, and how God is, is, um, is worked in my life uh, well, since, since I was young. Uh, for people that don't know me, my name is Sergio Royo uh, I'm 23 years old. I come all the way from Spain. Um, and I've been here in, in Lima for the last three years. Um, yeah, I play soccer. Well, I hope I still play soccer. Um, so I'm going to talk a little bit about myself and my Christian background. Uh, I come from a, from a Christian family. Uh, since I was young, I've been going to church every, every Sunday, just like a normal uh, Christian guy. Um, and by the age of 16, I moved from Spain to England to play, to play soccer. And I moved by myself. So that was kind of a turning point because when you're used to go with your family to church every Sunday, you know, you get up on a Sunday, you get in your dad's car, you drive up to the church, you go, you see the people that you've been seeing for probably the last 10, 11 years of your life, and it's something that you used to, right? And when I moved to England, um, well, I didn't have my dad, my dad or my mom waking me up on, on a Sunday saying, Sergio, let's get in the car, let's go, let's go to church. So we can say that soccer kind of uh, started to stay between me and God. Um, I would just say, Oh, I've got a game, I can go to church. Or I played yesterday, I can go to church. You know, and I was still young, I was only, I was only 16, so, and at that age, I think that's a, that's, a, that's a very special age, right? Where you're making decisions and you're figuring yourself out. Um, so, so, yeah, I started bec becoming lazy spiritually. And, and f since I've been 16, until I'm, like I said, 23 now, uh, it's, been, it's been a bumpy ride where obviously when I came back home to Spain I will go back to see my family and it will be the same thing, wake up on a Sunday morning, go to church and everything will be the same and it's not like in that bumpy ride at any point I've, I've said oh I don't believe in God, I, it, it, it hasn't been anything like that, it's just been oh, I mean I know, I, I know that I believe in God, I, I know that he saved my life, I know he's good but I, I didn't make him like my first, like my first choice, my first option in, in my life. So, so yeah, that's a little bit of myself and my Christian background. Um, like I said, soccer became my my main focus. Um, and yeah, I forgot that God gave me that gift of playing soccer. And and at some point last year, 2015. Um, I realized that, that God gave me that gift and that's what he wanted me to show the rest of the world that the work that he was doing through me, it was because of soccer. So because of soccer, I was showing his work on me. Um, and there was this one, uh, Matthew 5, 16. Uh, I'm gonna, the iPad does everything, technology is great. And he says, uh, make your light shine so others will see the good you do and will praise your Father in heaven. So, um, I mean, this, this verse just, just shows you um, that if, if you show people like your goods, like what, what you do well, 
they're gonna say, oh wait, he's doing well at something, and he's behaving differently, like what, like what's behind him, and and I, I just want people to see that at the end, God is is there with me. You know what I mean? I mean, I'm not saying that because it's God is there with me, everything is gonna be perfect, and I'm gonna be successful in life. That's probably not gonna be it, but I think it's a it's a it's a way of showing people that God is is good. Um, Okay, 2015. Um, well, I spoke in that picture that I show, showed at the beginning. That's me speaking in, in my church. This. <laughs> that's, that's me speaking in my church this this Christmas. Um, well, I I explain a little bit what was 2015 uh, to me. So 2015, summer 2015. I got the opportunity to go and play uh, soccer in, in the development league um, down in Mississippi and, and I had a few offers from different teams and I don't know why I decided to go to Mississippi. And Mississippi was the furthest one, uh, like I don't know, and, and suddenly I got down there and, and it was a Christian organization. I, I didn't ask for, well I think obviously my mom and dad they've always been praying, oh, God, please, like, work on Sergio's life. Uh, like, not bring him back, but like, you know, like, make, make him sure that he, he's, like, he's following you and he, you are his first choice in life. And when I told my mom, oh, those, that's my, the answer to my prayers. And, and it, it was, it's true, like, that's, that's an answer to, to one of the prayers that not, not, not only my mom and my dad have been, have been I've been doing, but I know the church back home. They've been they've been praying for it too. So I got down there, and and that um, that verse that I just read, Matthew 5:16, that's the slogan of the team. So how weird is that? So a verse that I'm that I've I've been reading, like when I realized that soccer has to be like something that I use for people to see God's work. It was the slogan of the team. Obviously, soccer, and I related it to soccer as well. So, like, that's the connection. But it, it was just, it, it was weird, but it was, it was nice. And and the, the owner of the team actually is, is someone that I'm gonna be thankful to probably for the rest of my life. He's, he's someone and his family that they they took me in as as one of their own, and, and they took me to, because I became lazy. They took me to church again, and that they they like walk that spiritualness in me again and and it's, it's, it's not just that like thanks to that they they gave me an opportunity to go to play in the, in the next level so everything soccer it was my first option then i i said god has to be my first option and they both combined and good things happened in this 2015 and hopefully 2016 keeps going the same way um yeah uh, Okay, books. Rusty, the um, Rusty, the the owner of this this team, uh, he gave me. I think it was the second week, the second week of me being in Mississippi. He gave me a book that it was called The Beautiful Outlaw. Uh, it's a book that talks about uh, how funny, how playful Jesus is in the Bible, and sometimes we don't realize that. Um, sometimes, since you're young. You just you go to church, and I remember when I was young, I used to listen. And I used to say, oh, "This is some, this is boring," you know what I mean? But reading this book, it's made me realize how how funny and, and playful and some of the situations that happen in the Bible that are actually funny. And there's one one thing in this book that I, I that is stuck in my in my head, and it says. Um, Reading the Bible without knowing Jesus' personality is like watching TV without sound. And I think that's right. If you know his personality, obviously we're not going to know his personality because we weren't there. But if you, if you read this book and you see the ways he, he behaves and, you know, like, I think it's, it's much more fun when you read the Bible after because you realize. What was it called? The Beautiful, the beautiful Outlaw, yeah. Um, it's like, and then I read the Wild Wild at Heart. Yeah. I think it's the same. It's the same author, I think. Okay. John Eldridge? Yeah. Okay. Um, 
so yeah, I mean, those, those little things have helped me a lot. And, and I think now, when I, play, when I play soccer, I put God first. I know that whatever happens now, because now I might have the chance to be a professional at soccer, I know that whatever happens, if it has to happen, it will happen because God, God wants me to, to do that. If it doesn't happen, I know he'll have another plan for me. But right now, he's showing me that he wants me to play soccer, so I'm really grateful for that because I've realized that if I put him first, he's going he's gonna to work through me and soccer is going to be involved probably at all times. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm really grateful for that. And I know it's a little bit of marketing because Stephen Curry always wears it now, but he's, in Jesus' name, I play. So that's, that's what I... I, that's what I put in my head. So I, I never forget, you know, that I, I play for, for him. And every time I, I score a goal, I, I point to the sky, um, just thank, thanking him for, for, um, for, for making me able to play the, the sport that I love. So yeah, I hope you learned a little bit more about me and I, I wish you the best. The following program is a special presentation of District 8 Fellowship of Christian Athletes, the heart and soul in West Ohio sports.